Today, DICE has launched their testing of brand new TTK values. They've increased the time it takes for you to kill an opponent. Now in this video, I want to present all the information to you so you have everything you need to form your own opinion on the subject and then I'll give my opinion later on in the video. If you agree or disagree with me today, then that's absolutely fine. That's not an issue at all. I encourage you to leave your opinion down below in the comments section. This kind of change DICE is making massively affects how the game plays and it's going to affect every single player that chooses to play Battlefield 5 over the next few days until they choose to end this test. And it goes well beyond just gunplay and the time to kill. I believe it's very important that as many people as possible know about and understand these changes so they can create their own informed opinion, whatever that opinion might be. Okay then, let's dig into things. A statement that was released on Reddit last night by EA and DICE clearly sets out the future vision for Battlefield 5. An issue appears to have been identified where newer, more passive players are reacting negatively to the current gunplay setup and things are going to change so that it's more welcoming. These players feel like they're dying too fast and they may not be returning to play Battlefield 5 because of that issue. This statement also mentions that a highly engaged portion of the community prefers the TTK as it is and DICE will offer those players a separate playlist with the now older TTK values active so they can play the way they want to. As an update to the Reddit post, we've also been given the statistics for the TTK changes and those give us a much better look at what DICE is really doing here with this new longer TTK. So boiling all the numbers down because that's a lot on screen and you can pause the video if you want to read them but in general this means that the semi-auto rifles, assault rifles, light machine guns, medium machine guns, submachine guns and self-loading rifles now require more bullets to kill enemies by one bullet. Now one bullet doesn't sound like a lot, but during live gameplay when you've not only got the enemy in front of you to focus on, but everything else happening besides that, it does make a big difference. This increase in the time it takes to kill an enemy is being made in hopes that passive players don't die as fast as they currently do and they have a more enjoyable experience overall. That's pretty much all you need to know about the change, so now it's time for my opinion. Dice and EA what are you doing with this game? Battlefield 5 before its launch was pitched as a more thoughtful, tactical, squad play focused entry into the franchise and with that came a brand new gunplay system built to be intuitive for the player. Weapons were set up to be easy to pick up but harder to master. Weapons were set up to be readable with the removal of spread and the introduction of rough recoil patterns, making things easier to read during combat. The bullet damage was also set up so that two key points could be achieved. First, the ability for weapons to win one versus two player gunfights when flanking or surprising your enemy and two, for there to be a clear difference between the fastest and slowest firing weapons to ensure variety. The gunplay system that DICE shipped with Battlefield 5 largely achieved this vision but it did need some smaller tweaks to make sure certain weapons were not as powerful as they were and others made more powerful. We've spoken about this a lot before and in the December patch DICE attempted to address this and made some strides forwards but ultimately didn't remedy the issues totally. SMGs are one of those areas that DICE attempted to improve but I don't feel the recent changes really went that far. My video from the weekend covers that topic so if you'd like more information I'll link that one down in the description for you. The change that DICE is now proposing and has implemented goes well beyond the initial changes and it applies a blanket damage reduction to almost all weapon categories in the game. This includes weapons that were performing as intended already and weapons that were underperforming as well. This directly impacts a player's ability to win a 1 vs 2 gunfight when you flank or surprise enemies because it will give the enemy players more time to react and this goes directly against DICE's vision for gunplay before the launch of the game. It will also skew the balance between high and low rate of fire weapons directly towards high rate of fire ones. They can now put out their damage a lot faster even though that damage is lower. 
at a high level, the change DICE is making essentially undoes all the work they've done over the last couple of years to produce a gunplay system that is more fitting to the tactical, lethal game that they've produced. It appears somewhere in the last few weeks that DICE has gotten cold feet about the gunplay system that they've built, and they've chosen to scale things back a little bit. In their statement on Reddit, it was made extremely clear that DICE and EA have plans to keep this increased TTK beyond this test they're running. The mention of the not extremely vocal wider player base dying too fast when they get shot at clearly shows that DICE is disagreeing with the opinions of their core community in favour of balancing the game towards passive players. Players who won't play the game long enough to even care about these changes. The fact this segment of the community is not extremely vocal tells me that DICE is using data they've collected since launch to back up this change. Yet this is the data that could potentially be infected with the issues that are plaguing the time to death. That's where you die extremely fast, often in just one or two frames, much faster than you expect. Of course, we have other variables like bandages, medkits you have to interact with, and attrition. All of that plays a part as well. Many passive players are still learning how these things work, and that may slightly skew the data that DICE has collected. DICE has even admitted that the time to death may be bugged, and is now working to try and resolve the issues that are present there. The time to death is not designed to be as fast as it currently is, and DICE knows something isn't right, but they've ploughed ahead with these damage reduction changes regardless, potentially misinterpreting the not extremely vocal wider community's actions of not returning to play the game, and just masking the issues that are actually present. I mean, if the time to death could be proven the culprit of players dying extremely fast in gunfights, would the whole TTK change then be undone as a result? Would the TTK change need to even happen at all, outside of a few balance tweaks? I really wish DICE had investigated the time to death more before they implemented this TTK change. On top of this, DICE has created a separate small playlist called Conquest Core. That supports the now older TTK values, so players not in favour of this change can have the experience that they want from the gunplay. As the name suggests, this playlist only contains Conquest as a game mode and doesn't offer up any other experiences, like Frontlines or Breakthrough as an example, that players could have before this test was invoked, so they're extremely limited in their choice if they want to play with the older TTK values. And while segregating the community with this decision, something DICE worked not to do by removing the premium system from Battlefield games, they've also stated their intent for this Conquest Core playlist to be used as a basis for the work towards a hardcore experience in Battlefield 5. Now, players that have been asking for hardcore actually wanted the TTK to be even shorter than it was, taking even less time to kill players. What's happening here is a rebranding of the gunplay system DICE worked hard on before the launch under a hardcore banner. That's not going to satisfy the players asking for proper hardcore settings, and it's going to annoy the core community who like the TTK as it was across all normal servers in the game before this test started. DICE is scaling things back and moving that gunplay system into a separate section of the game so they can appease the passive players with a longer time to kill. They're going back on their own vision. They're going against their passionate core players in the hopes they can attract some more passive players to come and play without actually fixing fundamental issues that are clearly present in Battlefield 5. At this point though, how would the players DICE is trying to target even know this TTK change had happened? How would players who may have already given up playing Battlefield 5, how would they know to come back and give the game another shot? Those players are already gone, and likely cannot be gotten back. Is it really a risk worth taking by DICE to aggravate their core community for the sake of, well, I don't even know how many passive players coming back to the game? And what's to say those passive players would even like the changes that DICE has implemented? It's concerning that DICE has taken that risk in the face of mounting backlash.
Some of these fundamental issues in Battlefield 5 are widely known about, and they could be just as easily linked to passive players not liking the game and not logging back in as easily as a short time to kill could be. The bugged assignments in the Tides of War, players not being allowed to unlock a new weapon when they've done the assignments, that's really annoying. That could definitely be a reason why the players aren't coming back. Or players not being rewarded company coins consistently, so they can't progress their weapons or buy cosmetics that they like from the armory. That could definitely be a reason why they're not coming back. Then you've also got things like server hanging, infinite black screens, and hard crashes in the game as well. All of those are really annoying issues and could just as easily be the reason why passive players are not coming back to play Battlefield 5. On the other hand, core community members, as evidenced by the players still playing Battlefield 5, they're happy to play the game regardless of these issues and put up with them because they love the game and they love the franchise. Rather than addressing the clear issues the game has at the moment, however, DICE is pressing ahead with a TTK change that aggravates the core community. This is the segment of the community that stuck with them since the reveal, that stuck with them through the inclusion debacle, the buggy alphas, the buggy open beta, and many things besides. If the core community is aggravated, what hope does DICE have of even attracting new players? Those new players will take one look at how the core community is reacting currently to what the developer is doing, they're going to do a 180, and they're going to go and find another game to play. Now, a TTK change like this also has effects far beyond just the weapons you use when you're using them. This change has accentuated the presence of attrition in the game, which has already proven to be a divisive mechanic. With you needing to use more bullets to kill players, you need more ammunition faster than you did before. DICE has already increased the amount of starting ammo you spawn in with when the game launched, and that's to support the lethality of the TTK that the game launched with and the recoil that came with that. Many bullets at range not hitting their target because players at that time were yet to master the weapons. Many players didn't feel they had the capacity to kill more than two or three players before needing to seek out ammunition, so DICE increased the ammo that they had when they spawned. Now, with this increase in TTK, we return to a state closer to what we saw during the open beta, where players are again struggling for ammo. Support players whose job it is to hand out ammo now need to use more bullets to kill an enemy and therefore have to spend more time shooting in their own gunfights before they turn to think about squad and teammates and then supplying them with ammo. You have no choice but to think about yourself more with this TTK system. It also massively affects map flow and movement within the game. If you know it's going to take more bullets to kill an enemy that you're aiming at, you're likely going to have to slow down. If more players on the map start to slow down, moving less between gunfights, there opens a bigger opportunity for enemies not currently engaged in gunfights to come across to you and join in the fight that you're having. This increases the overall amount of time you spend fighting and it reduces the amount of movement across the map even further. I've already experienced this in my first few matches playing with the new TTK values. Flanking becomes harder to accomplish if you come across multiple enemies. You've lost the reward of being able to kill those players that you flanked by surprising them. That's been replaced with moments where you're unable to kill more than one player because the TTK is long enough, the first player returns fire and actually hits you, or another player besides sees you and starts to try and kill you as well. This is a very familiar scenario to me because I've just finished playing Battlefield 1 for two years where this was basically the gunplay system, cut and dry. This leads to bigger issues moving forward where all players move in packs. This is called Zerging and it was a massive issue in Battlefield 1 and I've got a feeling we're going to see it return in Battlefield 5 if this TTK model stays. I'd personally like to see some before and after heat maps using data taken before this TTK change and after it so that we can see if map flow and player movement really changes that much. I'd wager it would change, but seeing the results in that format could be really interesting. This game is set up to be a live service game. In almost the first major update to that live service game, DICE is driving away the players that are supposed to be the audience 
of the live service. That's the core community. We've got plenty of bugs present in the game. The first content patch was delayed due to a bug in that. When updates arrive, they appear to break more things as much as they fix. And the main progression system in the game, driven by you earning company coins, has been broken since launch and since players hit rank 50 and found out that they didn't get any more coins. Now, I fully understand that running a live service that includes patches, fixes, new content, and more, that's not easy to run. I understand the process of quality assuring those updates is not easy either, and some things will slip through the net. But that doesn't nullify my disappointment when issues arise so frequently with this game. I do find it extremely hard to believe that the TTK and the gunplay, one of the few things this game has been praised for time and time again since the first close alpha, is the reason that passive players are leaving the game and not logging back in. I believe it's a culmination of things, and that DICE has picked out perhaps the least likely of the lot to pursue for their first update. The passive players that DICE is so desperately trying to attract are also not the players who will support this live service initially, but could become those players over time if they like the game. However, to begin with, it's the core community that will support the game and keep it healthy. The TTK and gunplay that Battlefield 5 launched with was one of the highlight features that got me excited for the launch of the game. I'd been to feedback sessions at DICE and played the game a few times before the closed alpha hit, and I knew at the time what the team was making was a good, solid experience. It gave me feelings of Battlefield 3, which is arguably the best gunplay experience in recent Battlefield titles, and that got me pumped for when the game was due to launch. I said to devs in those feedback sessions that what they had was really good, and I know they worked really hard to refine it and get it in the best position before the launch of the game. Now, just four weeks after the launch of the game, DICE is testing reduced damage values with the apparent intent on keeping the TTK longer in order to appease the passive players that largely jumped on the hate train when this game was revealed. That, to me, makes absolutely no sense, and I totally support the core community in their outcry against this change. The lack of communication during the early stages of the marketing campaign were remedied somewhat when the DICE studio took matters into their own hands with dev talks, Twitter takeovers, and Q&As. The core community responded really well to that. But this change, astonishingly, appears totally disconnected from what the core community is thinking right now. And I have to ask myself if this decision even came from DICE, or from somebody high up within EA, saw the sales numbers and decided the doors needed to be flung open and the price dropped in a desperate attempt to get the game to hit targets. It's a knee-jerk decision, it's reactionary towards feedback that cannot only be attributed to the change DICE is now making, and I think it makes the game look like a joke. I want to love this game, I want to support DICE with their continued work for Battlefield 5, and I want to see the game grow and become successful. But this change, at this point in time, I do not support, and I implore DICE to listen and work with their core community. Throughout the rest of the duration of this test that DICE is running, I'm going to keep playing with the new TTK values and swapping over into Conquest Core as well, so I can experience both sides of the argument, because I think it's important to keep fresh the two different options in mind. I've got clocked nearly 70 hours in Battlefield 5 now, so I feel I've got a good understanding of its mechanics and features, but I want to follow this video up in a few days with another look at the situation and evaluate it after a period of time to see if those new settings have grown on me or not. Battlefield games always change considerably over the course of their lives, and I see Battlefield 5 being no different. However, the manner in which DICE has gone about this change and the apparent disregard of the core community's feelings, that's left me somewhat concerned. It feels like we're being dictated to how we should play the game, rather than playing the game the way we want to play it. I'm also concerned the direction DICE has actually taken, appearing to swing towards more passive players rather than focusing on their core community and rallying around them, asking them how they can make the game better. As I said at the beginning, I'd be really interested today to hear your thoughts, so leave them down below in the comments section. Whether you agree with me, whether you don't, whether you're somewhere in the middle, or if you're doing something completely different, whatever, leave a comment down below and let me know how you're feeling. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video soon.